Um, all right, so we're going to move on to the last topic of the day. Um, and it's going to be a quick shift into boxing. Now, I know that it's not something that we usually cover. Um, I mean, we do we do it sometimes every now and then. Uh, this is a combat sports channel, but it's uh, shit stirring first. So um, <laughs> let's keep that on the forefront of our minds. Uh, so we're going to get to the heavyweight boxing clash between... Uh, Yusik and Fury, which will crown a unified heavyweight champion, kind of. Um, so if this finally taken place, who do you think is going to snatch all four belts and how? Oh, man. Dude, this is so, this one was really difficult. Actually, um, in thinking about this, I think I went back and forth on it. Like, okay, I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you Tyson Fury. Ah, but what if... I'm going to say Usyk. Ah, wait. Like, I went back and forth, like, multiple times. And where I landed was, I really don't know. But in the interest of actually picking somebody, I'm actually going to go Tyson Fury. And the only reason that I'm going Tyson Fury is for the intangibles part of it. Um, He's been here before. Not to say that Usyk hasn't fought for titles because he definitely has. He's been in the bright lights, but these lights are a little bit brighter. Um, not to mention um, Tyson Fury is the bigger man, the much bigger man. Um, so you put size and experience in this type of environment together. It makes me lean towards Tyson Fury. I wouldn't be surprised if he loses. Um by any means and I won't be let me come eat crow because I was all on Tyson no because I don't have that much belief in him <laughs> I don't have that much belief either way but but for the sake of yeah. picking somebody I'm going to say Tyson Fury okay Um. so I've been obviously <clears throat> we've spoken about this a little bit and I've been vocally picking U6 since this fight was announced, which was, you know, it feels like a decade ago. Yeah. We're still, well, you know, we're here now. I'm not going to keep moaning about that. And I am going to stick with U6. However, like, I'm a little bit nervous, more nervous about this than I have been at any point a, a week away from the fight. Like, I believe if both men were in their full primes at their very best, to me, it's kind of like a coin toss. So kind of like looking at both fighters, what you said was entirely true. You know, Yusik is going to be smaller. On, he's on, You know, apparently he's six inches shorter, which I don't believe Fury is really six nine. I think he's more like six seven. Yeah. So it'd be more like four inches. Mm -hmm. Yusik going to have a significant reach disadvantage, which again is going to be about six inches. And more significantly... <clears throat> He's probably going to come in there approximately 60 pounds lighter, which is an issue. Mm -hmm. um, now, U6 primary free strengths in this one are probably going to be his speed, his elusiveness. Um, so speed and, speed and elusiveness would be one. Uh, pressure and cardio would be another. And then the final thing is his ability to adjust to his opponent's style on the fly. I actually, I actually believe watch having watched both of them extensively, and I do watch a lot of boxing, even though I shit on it. I think Usyk is technically the better fighter. I think he's got a better tank, and I do think he's got a better ring IQ. Not that Fury's ring IQ is bad. Just from what I've seen, I believe that Usyk is a bit more developed. Mm -hmm. I, 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 again, I'm not saying that as a slight on Fury because I genuinely think that in those areas that I've mentioned. Yusik is the best in heavyweight boxing and has been that way for a considerable amount of time. Now, if you look on the Fury side of things and the advantages that you spoke about, this dude is physically massive. And he's not just physically massive, but he's exceptionally quick and elusive for a guy of that size. And I think it, I think it often 
deceives his opponents because obviously you see how big he is and are often surprised and overwhelmed by how quick he is and how elusive he is. And he does have a very considerable high boxing IQ himself. Mm -hmm. They're both exceptional fighters with vastly different styles. And for me, this is genuinely the clash between the two best heavyweight fighters in the world right now. The issue for me in this one and where this fight is, is I'm not certain that we're getting the prime for prime fight here. We know with Yusik, he's a consummate professional who's known this fight is coming for two years and he dedicates himself humbly to the game. Now, on the other hand, you've got Fury, who's a loudmouth, gobby, arrogant, beer belly, cokehead idiot that clearly, <laughs> until quite recently, wasn't really seeing Yusik as a legitimate threat. He wasn't. And judging by his judging by his ch choice of opponents and performances, has not been training that seriously as he could have been in the last few years. Now, bear in mind, he's been talking down about a guy in Usyk who's had three hundred amateur fights. Fury's only had thirty. He won his first cruiserweight title in his tenth pro fight, and then went on to unify the division by beating three elite champions. Mm -hmm. And he didn't just beat three elite champions. He went to their backyards, one at a time, and beat the fuck out of them, and then unified, and I'm talking about three elite fighters, unified the entire division, went up, fucked up Anthony Joshua for 24 rounds, so badly that everyone was saying, that guy's cooked. Is anybody <laughs> saying that now? Nope, not after what he just did. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you see what I mean? The reason why I'm nervous, though, it's because I actually think that what happened with Fury and Ngannou might be the best thing that could have happened to him. Mm -hmm. Like, he arguably loses that fight. At, like, he arguably loses it. At best, it was competitive. He lost. And then he watches that same man get absolutely destroyed by Joshua. Murdered. Who, in turn, got absolutely destroyed with for 24 rounds by the guy he's going to be standing across from on Saturday night. So, and again, it leads up to February where he's supposed to fight Usyk the first time. He miraculously gets this Charles Oliveira style cut. I'm just going to leave that where that should go. I, I honestly believe that he did it on purpose. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I find it interesting is because based on what we've seen from Fury since then, it's clear that he understands the threat and has probably been, been preparing adequately for it he's looking leaner yeah he's not talking as much shit <clears throat> if anything in interviews that i've seen him in he's been overly complimentary mm. and i believe that a prime fury that's focused offers problems that very few heavyweights in the history of the sport can yep so maybe he's locked in for the past four or five months He's refocused enough to get himself back to where he needs to be to fight a guy that I genuinely believe is one of the most underrated pound for pound boxers of all time. I genuinely believe that about Usyk. I think if he wasn't a Ukrainian quiet guy, he mostly stick he does have he does have some personality, but he's this mostly quiet Ukrainian guy, he sticks to himself. I genuinely think if that guy was English or American, he'd be seen as one of the greatest boxers ever. <laughs> I genuinely believe that. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see. I do think, I do think I'm kind of. This video is a little bit long because it is a boxing one and it's something that we don't usually do. Um, I feel like stylistically this is going to be very difficult for Fury in the sense that he has struggled with south paws in the past. Mm -hmm. Got dropped by Cunningham, who was also a, uh, a welterweight. Francis was and when fighting uh, south paw when he dropped him. South Paul as well. They they knew that looking looking at it, mm -hmm. and he fought Didion White a while ago. And even though he ended up knocking him out, Didion White saw the same thing with the Cunningham fight. And he's not a South Paul, and fought him at South Paul not very well, but it really stifled Fury. And imagine what somebody imitating a South Paul style in a fight. If 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 he can do that, imagine what the best southpaw heavyweight fighter the game has maybe ever seen can do 
in the same situation. So I don't know with Fury, I feel like he's got two options. He can either pick at range and hope that he can catch Yusik, who's very elusive, which I don't think is a very good game plan. Or he can do what he did against Cunningham, hold up that high guard, wait for Yusik to come in and do his work, and then try and catch him when he comes in close, which is also a very dangerous game because Yusik's going to be a lot quicker. And the, the, the dangerous thing about Yusik in that kind of situation, Yusik gets more and more active the longer the fight goes. <clears throat> Whereas Fury, and uh, it, this was something that I noticed looking up at the statistics and and also looking up at some of the other build-ups to this fight. He grows into fights and he gets more and more active, whereas Fury dips. Yeah. He takes breaks. Starts to coast. You can't do that against a guy like Usyk. So I think Fu um, Fury's only way to win this fight, he's got to find a way of knocking him out. And he's got to do it before the ninth round. Hmm. <coughs> that's the way I feel like this has got to go I feel like it's either going to be Fury catches him and looks unbelievable or he gets outworked for 9 out of 12 rounds and outpointed it's not a bad take and I think I'm going to side with that it's not a bad take and that's why I'm I was I that. was going back and forth on it because I realized how good <laughs> Usyk is and normally when, when a heavyweight fighter comes up from cruiserweight they normally do very well because of the speed that they they bring, the the fact that they don't have to cut as much weight, um, if mm -hmm. any if any at all. Um, I mean, mm -hmm. we've seen this play out with Evander Holyfield. Evander Holyfield did the very same thing and was dominant. Um, mm -hmm. Now, granted, he wasn't fighting somebody quite the size of um, of Tyson Fury, but he fought somebody close. In Lennox Lewis, so Lennox Lewis, yeah, yeah so, very similar. Um, I, that's what kind of gave me a little trepidation, but um, <laughs> I, I would not be surprised if, at all if Usyk comes in and does what he's supposed to do and wins this fight handedly. Mm -hmm. Um, it really, to me, it all comes down to how serious is Tyson taking this, and I, it looks like he's taking it serious. Oh, I think he's taking it fucking seriously by the way he's looked. And how ready is he to deal with that speed? How and what what kind of style he's going to fight with? If he if he's going to fight, you know, the aggressive way that he fought, you know, Deontay Wilder in that second fight, um, mm -hmm. I think that that would be bad because I feel like Usyk is too smart. Um, like he's oh, he's, so he's going to have to try to mix up, you know. The coverages, as we would say in basketball, you got to mix it up. You mix it up with their what mm -hmm. they're seeing, um, and that way he doesn't get comfortable. But I don't, it's going to be a crazy chess match. I'm really, really looking forward to that one. Yeah, I think I think what, whatever happens, I think it's the reason. If you look at the odds of it, I mean, they're really, 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 really close, right? Match. It's a pick 'em. It really is. I think. Well. I think Fury, as it stands, is like a very, very minor favorite. Yeah. And I think it's because of what most people, looking at the tangibles, the size, the reach, the strength, the fact that, like you said, he's been on those very, he's been in the very brightest of lights before. Mm -hmm. um, that's the reason why I think he's getting tipped. But like, and again, I wouldn't be surprised with either result but you know in this game you've got a ride with somebody and yep. um i've been riding with usik since since um the minute this fight was announced i just felt like this guy is um is special and he's special in a way that people don't realize yeah and you know what i think it's really only people who really watch that know i wish this was more publicized because <clears throat> just because of the the gravity of the fight um, you, you people don't realize you don't get undisputed championships that often nowadays. And this is for all of the marbles. No. This is winner take home. This isn't, you know, I took three belts and then somebody's got the WBO belt over in Australia or something weird. Like 
he, they're taking everything. Whoever wins gets all of them. Whoever loses goes home with no belt, pants falling down. Like it's nothing. You, you get nothing. There is a there is a there is a problem with that, dude. Do you know Do you know about the IBF situation? No. What? So basically, one of the belts that Usyk is holding. The reason why there's been a whole load of uproar about this whole situation is because the IBF mandatory was supposed to have been done already. Mm. So Usyk was supposed to have fought. I think it's Hergovic. So basically. It's believed, I'm not sure how true this is, that when he takes, whoever takes all the belts on Saturday, the IBF is going to immediately be stripped. That sucks. And they're going to have a, um, and they'll have a, and that's where they believe that potentially Joshua and Hergovic could step in and fight for that belt. And then you've got a whole, and this is why people are so pissed off with Fury. Because it was the taking in, taking in Garnu, not fighting, you know, the mandatory. when he was supposed to. Oh, yeah. So that then the mandatory wouldn't have come into place by then. Yeah. And then it was the taking that fight and then not fighting Usyk when he was supposed to. So now it's like, we don't even know if we're going to get the full... Now, the thing is that the IBF might just go, right, well, he's the champion. As long as he's defending all the belts, it doesn't really matter. Mm. It really depends on what the organization is going to do and what their incentive to do. I hope they is. figure that out because this is it's a prestigious thing, and they got to get it right, you know, for it to be. And the thing is that they they will probably want if Usyk wins them all. I'd imagine nothing will happen because they know he'll be active. Mm -hmm. Whereas with Fury. Yeah, yeah. When do you get that IV? When, yeah, when do you get know. that IBF defense? You don't. You never. You never know. know. And he's not going to fight Hergovic, who's mandatory challenger. Nobody wants to fight Usyk that dude. <laughs> what do you get out of that? Unless you get something out of it, like you mentioned with Joshua. Like if they do it that way, Joshua goes and beats him. Now we got another big fight. But that's the thing. If it, if it goes down that route, it's a weird one because um, if if they can't do Joshua if Usyk wins. Uh, yeah, they can't do that one. They can't do that. So basically, if you want, it depends on where you want to go. I think, I think, I think what most boxing fans want is they want Fury to win because they believe in their mind. If Fury wins, he'll fight Joshua. If you think that this fight has taken a long time, that one's going to take even longer. When Usyk and fuck, they've been talking about that fight for like eight years. Yeah. Seven years. Like as, as a British boxing fan, I'm telling you, you think you're sick of like you think the the MM, uh, American MMA fans are sick of hearing about Chandler and Conor McGregor. Try that times ten with these two. Dang. It's like the most yeah. incredible amount of bullshit that's come from that. But yeah, the, just to put just to put a hole in it, the fact that we've both put pick two different guys and we've got you know, but two very similar reasons for picking each either guy shows how close this fight is and it is a historic event in boxing it's massive it is. and the winner is going to have their legacy in stone forever yep this is going to be the the guy of this era whoever wins this fight it's not just about the four belts it's the who's the next tyson who's the next muhammad ali who's the next you know holyfield who's the next lewis who's the next klitschko yeah that's what this is about.